Hello YouTube and welcome to What the Math and Kerbal Space Program. Now the actual Kerbal Space Program, the final release is about to hit the store soon. We're still in beta, but waiting for this final release. Anyway, today's goal is to launch a smallest spaceship, a sp smallest manned spaceship to the moon. And we're going to try to get to the moon and then return. We're going to be using a very similar design to what you see here, except that Oh, so, okay, this is a asparagus model and I'll show you what this means in a second. Basically what it does is, once you launch the spaceship, uh, okay, this one doesn't seem to fly very straight. I need to straighten it up a little bit. Uh, once you launch the spaceship, um, and normally this, there will be someone sitting here, I just, I didn't put any pilots there yet because this is still a test model. Um, what will happen is when you run out of fuel right here, you will then um, release two of your tanks and continue blasting your engines. There we go. And now, as you can see, all my fuel tanks have refilled because the, the, the way it works is uh, you consume the fuel from the outmost fuel tanks and then you essentially uh, release the unused, or sorry, the used up fuel tanks and continue blasting your engines. Um, with a full fuel tank. Now, you can do this with many different designs. This is a very, very good way of getting to really any destinations uh, with the most efficient possible um, engine design. But we're not going to be using this because I just recently realized that this is not the lightest craft. And actually, I'll show you why in a second. And the reason why it's not the lightest craft is because of the weight. This is actually 4.5 tons. Uh, it's pretty heavy. If, even though it sounds pretty light, it's actually pretty heavy for um, and for, for spacecraft that can actually get lighter. So but let me, before I show you the lightest possible design that I found so far, let me show you what this consists of. So this is, this is the asparagus launcher using the smallest engines and the smallest uh, fuel tanks I could find. And this, no, not that. This is my actual uh, lander slash take offer from essentially any moon. So I'm going to be using this to land and to take off from any single or every single moon in the Kerbal, uh, Kerbal system. And the way it works is you have the uh, RCS fuel tank right here with mono propellant. You have RCS mono propellant engines with a decreased thrust limit because if you actually increase the thrust limit, uh, it has a ridiculously high uh, thrust to weight ratio, TWR, which makes it go way, way too fast. It's actually faster than we want. And of course, there's also the RCS, um, the control engines right here on the side, just so that we can actually control it. Then there's a couple of uh, solar engines and the Robo, Robo, Pro, Pro Robodyne Octa 2 unit for um, automatic control and also for a little, a little bit of stability. Now, placing this seat in the middle is ridiculously hard, so I actually didn't place it uh, quite straight in the middle, so I do have to use my balancers to kind of straighten out a little bit. Anyway, so let me show you the lightest design I found so far, and I'm sure someone out there will find something that's even lighter, but mine is this. And here it is, here's my Light Cracked Mark II. This is my beauty at 3.7 tons, it's actually 800 kilograms lighter than my previous model, and it's using, instead of asparagus model, it actually uses um, a jet engine with radial engine body, which allows me to, uh, well, basically it has both the fuel and the, um, the air uh, intakes, which allows me to, to use it at a quite high altitude as well. So I actually put some extra air intakes here, and these are actually optional, but it does allow me to uh, use my engine at approximately 31, 32 kilometers um, of altitude, which basically means this, I can um, use this engine to accelerate to a lateral speed of approximately 1500 meters per second, then release this part and use my last uh, last stage right here, or I guess that's the second stage, with a fuel tank and a tiny, tiny engine on the bottom, which basically takes me to the orbit and then even has enough fuel to take me to the moon. And I decided to put a bigger tank here because it um, essentially it allowed me to um, to use this particular uh, stage to, to get to the moon and then slow down and use this part to land on the moon and take off. Now that's all in theory, I haven't actually tried this yet and I also have to put a pilot here. Now that might be difficult because my previous model was really short so I could just jump on it from the ground, but here I think I'm, I may need to put a ladder. So I need to go into, into utility and put a ladder. Where's the ladder? 
Actually, this is what I decided to do. I, I attached the stability enhancer right here on the right side or left side or just basically on the side and uh, put up a capsule right on top of it. So I just need to make sure I have a crew member. Yes, I do. I have Jocelyn Gurman, who's going to be my first Kerbal Explorer to launch on this rocket. And as soon as he gets out of the uh, capsule, he should be able to board the spaceship. So let's see if this works. All right, so here's my beautiful rocket. He's going to get out of his capsule and let's see, let's hope it works. Board the ship. Yay, excellent, it worked. Okay, so now it's launch time. So let's launch the spaceship and try to take it to orbit. This is my first attempt. Uh, I'm going to switch to controlling from the Octa 2 because it will allow me to see where I'm going. Enable my SAS and three, two, one, launch the engine. And let go all right so we are flying that's good that's a good sign so this is my first attempt at this manned uh crazy capsule thema jig that will hopefully take me to the moon i should probably be watching my atmospheric efficiency oh a little bit too high this is basically the, this number right here shows you uh the speed that you should be going at so that you have just the perfect speed uh, balance between uh, the gravity that's pulling you and the atmospheric drag that is trying to stop you. So if it's at 100%, this is when you uh, use up the least amount of fuel. All right, so uh, I'm going to skip this part and, uh, or I guess I'll show you some parts of this takeoff, but the boring parts when I'm still getting to the uh, through the atmosphere will probably be cut because you've seen this so many times if you've played this game. Now, if everything goes right, I should be able to move at the velocity of approximately uh, 1,500 meters per second before I need to actually do anything about it, before I need to s switch to my other engine. If I'm lucky, I can, might, be even, uh, might, might be even going a little bit faster than that. All right, so uh, 30 kilometers altitude. Ooh, I am moving faster than that. Okay, that's good. That means that I won't have to uh, burst, uh, burn as much fuel on, on my other second stage to get that extra velocity. So, as you can see, using this design allows me to essentially um, get to... Ooh, wow, that is a pretty awesome... I, I can probably get a little bit more of that from that. There we go, there we go. Ooh, so close. This is actually close to orbital speed. That's amazing. Didn't expect to, be, to have such an ex excellent first launch. Uh, and I still have 15 liquid fuel left. That's awesome. All right, so I'm going to increase my orbit speed to as much as I can before my engine gives out. And as you can see, I actually decreased my thrust because it's still sucking in air. Even at 43 kilometers, it's still sucking in air and increasing my speed just a little bit. And now I can start using my actual rocket and move a little bit higher than that. Now, because I don't actually have a stabilizer on or controller on this uh, unit, I only have the Octo 2, it's really, really hard to control this without using the RCS. So I'm actually going to wait until the last second before using RCS and uh, then blast my engine. Uh, right now, I'm just going to be spinning out of control in all directions because this is a pretty small unit and it has some uh, weight imbalances in it. But that's okay. It doesn't really bother me. All right, and here we go. We're in the perfect orbit around Kerbin. Actually, it's not circular, but it's it's an orbit. It's, uh, it looks like an orbit. It feels like an orbit. It must be an orbit. So we're going to go ahead and start plotting our course to the moon. And this will be not very difficult because we have so much fuel left. Actually, way more than I imagined. I believe I have something like, yeah, 2,400 meters per second left. That's enough to get there and to basically have fun uh, landing as well. So let's just go ahead and plot this orbit and then we'll start launching our spaceship to the moon. And this is the beginning of the first stage of the burning process. I'm going to basically try to align myself with this particular um, intercept with the moon and this will give me a periapsis of 627 kilometers but then I'll try to correct it so that I'm actually pretty close with the moon um, or basically intercepting the moon at approximately five to six kilometers which will give me a perfect ooh too much which will give me a perfect uh passage next to the moon 
And here we go, we have an intercept with the moon at approximately 15 kilometers and still 1400 meters per second delta V left. So this is actually quite a lot to even land on the moon. Uh, so I could have actually used a much smaller tank here. This could have been a, the smallest possible tank. And thus the total weight of this actual spaceship could have been 3.5 tons, much smaller than uh, my original design of 4.5 tons. Anyway, so let's accelerate time and then try to land on the moon because I could have maybe mis miscalculated something and this whole trip could be actually a disaster. So let's see if we can actually land on the moon. And here comes the beautiful moon. So let's look at my astronaut. He looks pretty happy. He's pretty excited about this as am I. So in half an hour and 27, 25 minutes, we need to blast our engines and assume the circular orbit. Here we go. Here we go. Very close. Almost there. We still have a thousand meters per second left and okay, I don't I think that's a little bit too high. I'm actually going to decrease this a little bit and this should be about five kilometers. And here we go approaching at that particular point and it's pretty bright here. So I think we can actually start landing. It doesn't really matter where we start landing. I'm just going to start blasting my engines right here. But I don't want to land in the crater because that will make me use up more fuel. So I'm just going to pass this crater first and then start landing. All right, this sounds pretty good. Let's do it here. Uh, uh oh, uh, just not this crater, please. No, don't want to land in there. Okay, no, I think I'll be able to land right here. Yeah, that there we go. There we go. There we go. And here comes the landing part. Uh, basically where we'll be landing on the moon. Hopefully everything goes right here and we don't accidentally destroy our ship. I do still have quite a lot of monopropellant left, but I'll need that to take off from the moon and to basically try to return to Kerbin. So um, I'm going to actually lose this stage because it only has about 500 meters per second left, but I still will be using it to land. So um, this stage is actually surprisingly pretty powerful, pretty useful, a lot more powerful than I expected. But originally I was planning to lose this stage right before the landing, but I think I'll be actually trying to touch down with this as well. And here's my shadow. So I'm just going to align my shadow and oh, moving a little bit too fast. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. You can start landing now. And touchdown ish. All right. Good enough. No, 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 no. Don't, don't fall down. Don't fall down. Other way. Other way. No, 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 that's not good. Oh, I used up so much fuel. Ah, oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. I'm still using fuel. So I need to get out, get out of here first. I'm going to need to onboard, deboard, whatever the word is. All right, that is not exactly what I wanted, but things kind of fell apart uh, because this ship is kind of large. I did fall down from it and basically things went a little bit unexpectedly. So let's just plant the flag really quickly and let's just say this is going to be our first. Oh, no, my ship is running away from me. No, come back. Uh, hurry up, NASA. OK, good. A uh, something, something tiny ship. Tiny ship landing. Now let's go catch it. No, run, 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 run. Come back. Come back to me. No. Oh, no, I have to give. I can't get on it. Come on. There we go. There we go. Okay, perfect. Oh, no, I'm, I'm rolling with it now. That's not good. So I need to start controlling it from my uh, Octa 2. And that means I need to turn on my RCS. And basically, I'm going to take off now. All right, that's good. Start flying. And I think we're going toward the east. Where is the east here? This way. Perfect. Wow, look at that. We even had some more fuel left. We can now disconnect our last stage. And this is essentially my moon lander right here. I'm planning to use this a lot more. Uh, as you can see, it's really, really powerful. I'm planning to definitely use this a lot more with other um, moon landings and uh, satellite landings because this is a perfectly uh, light and perfectly capable spacecraft that is essentially good for any kind of a moon in this game. And you can use this to land on any body um, 
any almost any satellite i think no i meant to say any satellite but almost any body actually you can even use this to take off from carbon it just you won't have enough fuel to actually reach anywhere but uh this has enough fuel to essentially take me off uh even dune i think so i may actually try this on dune later on and what i'm planning to do with this is I, I'll, i'm planning to attach uh, a, docking a docking station right here on the bottom. This will basically allow me to dock with the spaceship when I approach it and then refuel the spaceship and use it again and again and again. Uh, so anyway, so let's just get to our orbit around the moon and let's see if I can actually take off from here and try to land on Kerbin right away. And here we go, we have an intercept with Kerbin at 22 kilometers, which means that we'll be entering its atmosphere and luckily landing now there's one thing you'll probably notice is that i don't have any parachutes on this machine and that's because i wanted to try something new i wanted to actually use these engines the ones that i have right here the monopropellant engines with my thrust limiter increased slightly higher to try to slow down right at the moment before landing and since i do have about thousand uh, 1100 meters per second of delta v left i should have enough fuel to actually slow down my spaceship right before it crashes on kerbin which would essentially give me a very kind of a rough landing so this is what my plan is i was going to put a parachute on it but then i decided to try something completely new something different and this is what i'm going to do and look at john wynn kerman he's so happy about this he actually really likes my idea of landing without the parachute I totally expected him to like it and I am glad he's so happy about it. So let's go ahead and wait until we land on Kerbin and try to not die. And here we are approaching Kerbin upside down just like we were supposed to. Uh, our brave pilot is very very happy about the situation. He's confident he's going to be able to land perfectly uh, well even though he has no parachute. And we have 1100 meters per second delta v which should be enough to slow down at the last moment right before we crash i mean before we land on our beautiful homeland planet now it looks like we'll be landing on in the water actually which is fine it makes things a little bit safer um chances are we'll survive this landing and chances are we'll be able to recover part of our spacecraft as well uh, things get getting a little bit wobbly but that's okay so we're moving at 3200 meters per second which is a little bit too fast, but that's okay. It's also about to get really toasty here, but that's fine because we are from Kerbin and we are not afraid of any heat. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna accelerate time a little bit just so that we can descend through the atmosphere a little bit faster. Um, now, because I am not playing with any mods, this is actually a pretty safe descent. Normally, in real life, this would be burning sensation that would probably cause the death of this astronaut, but he is heat proof and very happy about this whole situation. All right, so this smallest, tiniest craft is about to return to his home planet, and I believe it is the water landing that I will be experiencing. I don't think there's anything underneath here, although maybe that's land. I can't really see because of the clouds. All right, and as we're following through the skies and through the clouds, we'll probably start to re uh, realign ourselves with um essentially with our face toward the sky and hopefully this will actually lead us to a safe landing let's see where we're actually going to be landing because i don't know if it's water or land if it's water it's not too bad because i can just smack down into it pretty fast and still survive if it is land i may need to be very careful and actually use my okay it's yeah it's water but if we were if it were land i would have to use my um my engines to try to slow down very very carefully and i would still probably lose a few engines and possibly this tank okay so now all we need to do is realign ourselves this way oh boy okay it's not working because we're uh too heavy too face heavy okay i need to turn on my controllers and begin descending really slowly here we go, 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 here we go. This is how you would do it on land as well. As you can see, my engines are relatively powerful. They can actually easily take off the spaceship without much trouble. And here we go. Oh, oh yeah. Perfect. Success. Everyone's alive and I have my spaceship absolutely intact. Yeah, good job brave astronaut whose name i already forgot and uh this is it so this is the spaceship that i'll be using in the future videos when i'm trying to land on every single 
um, planet and every single satellite in the Kerbal system. And that's it. Thank you for watching and please subscribe. Bye-bye.